Baby, you are going to go broke showing turkeys like these. Now we're talking turkey. Gobble, gobble, motherfucker. It's turkey time. Gobble, gobble. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Let's Talk Turkeys. I'm your host, Movie Miss, and I'm being joined this week for... It's it's a turkey, but I got to also kind of give it cult movie status. Uh, I'm being joined to cover this film, which we'll reveal momentarily, by my co-host, Drive-In Dave. Hello, sir. Hello. So this film, Leprechaun. <laughs> From, according to IMDb, 1992, but it was actually released in January of 93. Hour 32 minutes, starring Jennifer Aniston and her old nose. The luck of the Irish is being packed and shipped to a little town in South Dakota whose luck may have just run out. are you feeling about this one <laughs> when was the first time you saw it and what do you think of it overall uh okay i i've got a very good relationship with this movie but in my memory going back and rewatching it i was like what the fuck was i thinking liking this movie as a kid this is this is this is a bad bad movie it's fun but it's a bad bad movie but i, I discovered it on vhs uh, i was doing my annual i think this was like one of the early years i was doing my annual halloween just horror fest, candy, video games, horror movies, just every Halloween I would do this stuff. A buddy of mine and I were watching it, and I, one, I fell in love with Jennifer Aniston. Eventually, I did fall out of love with her because I don't like her anymore. <laughs> but, I mean, she's a good actress, I'll give her that. But but it's like, it was just, she was cute. I liked this movie. Uh, it was funny. There was just something about it, like as a kid, it just sucked me in. I loved it. But it doesn't age well. No, in a lot of respects. Um, first time I saw it was VHS. I did not go to the theater to see this. And I liked it. I was a little older than you when, when you first saw it, when I first saw it. So I, I was like, couldn't really relate to the Jennifer Aniston character, the, the teenage girl being super pretentious and bitchy and stuck up like that, even though I was a Southern California girl and she's complaining about this is in LA, blah, 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 or whatever. You know, we'll get to it. Um, I still couldn't relate to her. I was like, God, what a cunt. She has no redeeming qualities in this film. She never saves herself as far as likability. <laughs> she stays a bitch to the bitter end. <laughs> I beg to differ. She has three redeeming qualities. Mm -hmm. Tits, face, and ass. <laughs> those at that, like as a, as a teenage boy growing up, those three qualities, you would be willing to put up with anything. <laughs> I, I get that. I <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you that. I get that. So this movie, A Turkey, like I said, 31% critic score, 33 audience. Pretty much almost the same feelings there. Directed by Mark Jones and written by, and I guess he wrote a lot of TV. I didn't really, there was nothing of note <laughs> to me for him. I've never heard of him. <laughs> he says he was influenced for this a little with the comedy in it uh, by Critters, the movie Critters. Really? Which, okay. yeah, we're going to be uh, covering here on the show with uh, the guys from Cinema Shit Show. So that'll be uh, forthcoming. Um, but because I just recently watched Critters, I read that and went, what? I don't see that at all. But I did find some interesting stuff doing the research. So it's it's um, conflicting stories on who depends who you're talking to. Excuse me. Depends who you're talking to. Warwick Davis 
says he's the one that wanted to inject the comedy and the silliness and really camp it up with the leprechaun. And the writer says it's him. Yeah. I would tend to believe Warwick Davis on that. Yeah, I would too, because he seems like a more trustworthy guy. He seems like a cool, cool dude, which is funny because like going back, think about it. I think this is the only movie of his I've ever actually seen. You've never seen Willow? No, I did not grow up on Willow. I don't have a heart attack so early. Well, I, I, <laughs> I grew up watching different movies than most kids, uh, most people my age. Like, you know, I didn't discover Goonies until like five years ago. My ex-girlfriend made me watch it. It is one of those things, too. You're a child of the 90s more so. So the 80s films like Goonies and Willow weren't on your radar anymore, you know, 10 years after they've been out sort of thing. So I, I that's fine. You can have a pass. <laughs> you got to watch Willow, though. I'm telling you. See, Val I, I is to, perfect in that. I was going to watch Willow. And this this is OK. I, I, I've got to go off on a rant. I was going to watch Willow when Disney Plus did the series. And I was like, okay, I, the series looked like it was going to be a lot of fun. So I was all hyped. I'm going to sit, sit down and watch it. Fucking Disney pulls the damn series off of their streaming platform. So I never get to see it. And I'm like, you know what? No, just just because you guys did that to me. Fuck you, Disney. I'm not watching your movie. Then. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I don't own the movie, but I've seen it a bunch and really enjoy it. And so when the series was going to be out, I went ahead and watched the first two episodes and I was bored to tears and didn't finish it. Not good. The movie, however, so fun for a fantasy action movie. So fun. But I digress. We are not here to talk about Willow. (laughs) (laughs) So this was Trimark's first theatrical release. They spent a million dollars on this movie and did 8.6 at the box office. So it was considered a success. They did do some reshoots for gore, which in a horror movie, and this one, even though Warwick Davis really camps it up and does some great funny shit, it's supposed to be a straight horror movie. That's how the guy wrote it. I appreciated that they went back and did reshoots for gore. They definitely needed it because yeah, like, like if it would have just been a horror comedy when you wouldn't have had the gore and when we get to the gore, I'll discuss it because I was just kind of like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> they tried. Uh, A for effort. <laughs> they, they, okay, see, uh, now that you say that, like, that's probably the way I need to look at this movie is that, okay, yes, it's not as great as it was when I was a kid, but it, it feels like, yes, they tried. They, they they put in the effort into this movie. Did they succeed? No, but they tried. <laughs> so the makeup... For and, I, and we didn't mention cast, but uh, Warwick Davis plays the leprechaun. Three hours to get into makeup and a good 40 minutes to get him out of it. Plus, you add on top of that the long shooting hours. That is a fucking marathon for just to be in this getup the whole time, too. He's never not in it, the makeup. He deserves a lot of credit for that because that's uh, the makeup is great. I mean, the the leprechaun looks freaky. I will give it that. They did a very good job on that. Oh, I was paying attention when they would do close ups on his face, trying to see like around the eyes. You can always see where the latex ends and the skin begins and, you know, the teeth and everything. And I really couldn't pick it apart, even in the close ups. I was shocked at how great his makeup holds up. So this was nominated in 1993 at the Chainsaw Awards, which as horror fans know, are great awards to get when you do horror movies. They won Worst Film. (laughs) Not one to be proud of, but an award's an award, right? (laughs) And they were nominated, though, for Best Makeup. They didn't win, but they were nominated. Top build cast. We have Warwick Davis as The Leprechaun, Jennifer Aniston, Ken Olent, Mark Holton, Robert High Gorman, and Shay Duffin as the top build cast. Now, Ken Olent, who is Nathan, the the young painter stud that Jennifer Aniston's Tori has an immediate crush on, has a Turkeyverse connection. He was in April Fool's Day, and he's the stripper student in Summer School, both from the 80s, so you might not know those. (laughs) Summer School, I actually know. I used to watch that a lot. They would show it on, you know, like over the air TV or something during the summer a lot. So I I do have a connection to that movie. It's a lot of fun, but I I, I would definitely not recognize the the stripper, though. He's the one that was sleeping in class all the time because he was a stripper at night. Okay, well, see, I I, put a cot in the classroom for him. You don't remember that? (laughs) I kind of remember the character, but it's like like I'd have to go back and like watch it. Like, I don't like obviously, you know, women are probably drooling over it because, you know, it's 
half naked man and everything. So hey, that movie had young Shawnee Smith, Courtney Thorne yes. Smith, like some some good looking chicks, Kelly Jo Minter, um, and of young Kirstie Alley in her prime. Like, come on. Moving on. IMDB plot. An evil, sadistic leprechaun goes on a killing rampage in search of his beloved pot of gold. To the point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, I guess if you just want it to the point, you don't want to like jazz it up or anything. That 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 works. I feel like IMDb needs to work a little harder, but that's okay. <laughs> right. We should get on there and jazz some of these up because it's just like Wikipedia. Anybody can contribute now, so... <laughs> I want to get paid for it, though. I mean, I, I've listened to the advice of the great Harlan Ellison. I don't want to take a piss without getting paid these days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump into this movie. This is a crazy movie. So the movie begins with a leprechaun. Cold open. Love a good cold open. We just see a leprechaun inside of a room made of stone counting his pot of gold. He speaks out loud about anyone stealing his gold is going to die. And everything he's saying rhymes. <laughs> Did you notice that? Yeah, that was a little bit like it caught me off guard. I, I, I had to stop and think for a second. Like, is this the right movie? Like, is, is this is coming off like a kid's movie. Like, the hell? Yeah. Everything's like limericks and rhymes. I was cracking up. Very few things he says in this movie are not in a, in a limerick or rhyme the way he speaks. And I was cracking up. Then we get credits and title card over movie for the next few minutes, which I appreciate. Let's keep it rolling. We see a limousine pulling up to a small home in the country. And I was like, oh, is this like a farm somewhere? Kind of out in the middle of nowhere. I wasn't sure where we were. It was a little the confusing. Like, I, I honestly thought we were like in Ireland for a while. Yes, because the man gets out and starts speaking to his wife, this drunk dude in his, I don't know, late 50s, 60s, maybe. And he's speaking in an Irish accent. Yeah, I thought they were in Ireland somewhere, like Rawhead Rex-ish. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, okay, this movie's going to take place in Ireland. This is going to be interesting. And we immediately find out this is Mr. and Mrs. O'Grady, which also added to that. I'm like, they must be in Ireland. They're the O'Grady's. The one thing that was the most distracting, though, in this, in this part was Mr. O'Grady's bad hairpiece. Please tell me that you caught that, like how egregious and obvious it was. <laughs> it, it was it was some pretty bad hair. I was I was kind of like, OK, you guys did not do a good job on makeup. Like, were you trying to make him look like crap? What's the deal here? He looks he looks like every sketchy pawn shop owner on Law and Order. Like it's <laughs> just a, a bad hair. Piece. It must have had its own wrangler. It was a lot going on. Should have got its own credit. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Tom Atkins' mustache, this dude had his hair. Needs its own credit. <laughs> so he opens a box and the wife mentions he wasn't supposed to ship his mother's ashes all the way from Ireland. Got it. Okay, they're not in Ireland, but he was. <laughs> so the man reveals that this is the urn, but his mother's ashes are not in it. It is filled with gold and he spills it on the porch, which was irritating to me. <laughs> that was a little frustrating. Like, like the two things I'm thinking are like, one you just filled an urn with gold like that's that's the only gold that you get like that that's kind of like a cheap ass amount of gold like if i'm thinking a pot of gold i'm thinking a big ass pot of gold you got an urn of gold dude you got screwed and then two <laughs> you probably just lost half of it through the crack of the damn porch i was thinking that too <laughs> he's drunk but he's being awfully careless anyway i was like oh my god and she calls him a drunken fool because he's spouting about leprechauns and i stole his gold and she's like yeah yeah Sleep it off. <laughs> so inside, she proceeds to make a pot of tea for him. And she starts to hear a child's voice singing from another room. Mary had a little lamb. This was sufficiently creepy to me. <laughs> so she goes over and finds a suitcase and she leans down and I'm waiting for the jump scare, you know, because <laughs> uh, she hears the singing coming from in the suitcase. I can't breathe. Please open the suitcase. I'm going to suffocate. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> let it out. Let it out. Whatever it is. No, no, no. <laughs> th th this is my problem with horror movies. I have so many problems. Like one, you know, you don't have kids. It's not like, you know, like you just suddenly realize, oh, wait, that's right. Like a couple of years ago, I popped something out of my vag and now it's living in the house with me. No, you know, there's no children in the house. So to hear this creepy child voice is like, okay, no, that's an excuse to get the fuck out of the house. Two, 
don't go and open the thing where the creepy voice is coming from. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> to be fair, I don't think she knows she's in a horror movie. <laughs> point I, I, I mean even if it's not a horror movie it's like no child is living in that suitcase no i i know but it's sufficiently creepy to me i was like ooh. so of course she opens it out pops the leprechaun she gets startled and backs up falls down the flight of basement stairs because the door was open <laughs> she snaps her neck and dies instantly at the bottom of the stairs the husband comes into the house after he's hidden the gold and he's announcing that he's hidden the gold. <laughs> and a voice that sounds like the wife comes from the kitchen saying, where did you hide it? But before the man can say where he hid it, the leprechaun carrying a tray of tea comes around the corner. Why not stay hidden and wait for the answer, leprechaun? Our movie would have been over four minutes in. <laughs> Problem solved. Well if we're going to go logic and th this is usually your job so i'm sorry i'm sorry if i'm stepping on your toes here but we're going to we're going to go logic yes why are you going to come out of hiding you could have just ended the whole thing right there two i'm sure the woman would have helped you out because I, I i she didn't seem like she was too happy with the fact that you know he came back with gold and she seemed a little superstitious anyway so you probably could have politely asked her for help instead of killing her uh, and then I've always had a problem with why is the obsession with gold? What the fuck is he doing? He's not spending it. Like, why Why yeah. does he even have it then? Yeah, he's got exactly 100 pieces and he always sits and obsessively counts it. And if he's even missing one, it's a murderous rampage <laughs> yeah. is what we're learning. Yeah, this is ridiculous. It's like, what is it with these fantasy creatures like dragons and leprechauns? They hoard gold and they never do anything with it. I know. One thing I noticed was this movie likes to play it fast and loose with leprechaun lore. I'm no expert on leprechauns. <laughs> I don't claim to be. But I did do a little bit of Googling. And there's all kinds of different things that you can do with leprechauns, I guess. Because they're fake. They're mythical. <laughs> so you can do what you want. This movie is all over the place. With Sometimes he's rhyming in these weird limericks. And sometimes he's not. He's ugly instead of cute leprechaun. Totally ugly looking with the makeup. But the outfit is the weird traditional pilgrim looking with the buckles on the hat and the shoes uh the whole four leaf clover thing that comes into play here in the movie i've never heard that before associated with be having power over a leprechaun there's just all kinds of like loosey-goosey rules they run with <laughs> uh, yeah i wasn't uh I, I had a chance to when i was in school to take a class on leprechauns and i i passed on it i decided to go with something else instead so I, i'm not good leprechaun. Yeah, Leprechaun 101, it just didn't call to me. I didn't I didn't I didn't feel a need like that was gonna come up in life. I didn't know this episode was gonna happen. Otherwise I would have taken the class. So right? it would have been super helpful. <laughs> yeah, it, it probably would have like made a little bit more sense then. But it does feel like this is just every myth as well as a couple of just like, ah, oh, let's just throw this in there for the hell of it, all jumbled together. Yeah, and then for the rest of the franchise, same thing. They play loosey-goosey and the rules change literally every film. <laughs> so there's no consistency in the leprechaun lore whatsoever. But you whatever. <laughs> so the leprechaun tells Mr. O'Grady here that his wife is dead. So he runs and grabs a gun and a four-leaf clover. The leprechaun gets scared by this, by the clover, and runs off down to the basement and the man chases him. He finds the leprechaun and his dead wife, so he shoots the leprechaun. He ducks behind the crate. We hear him say in voiceover, uh, this movie does this a lot and I'm going to point it out, lots of voiceover, bullets won't stop me forever, I'll just keep coming back. Okay. <laughs> but then after he says that, I guess he dies because we see the man pick up the little limp leprechaun body and put it inside this crate. I'm like, did he pass out after being shot? Like what happened there? That's kind of what I assume. It's like, it doesn't kill him. It's just like, it, it just knocks him out. It's like it's, stuns you know. him or. Yeah. Which would make sense. But I, I'm Irish. Like I've got like about 50% Irish in me. So it's like, I understand that it takes a lot to knock us Irish out. You know, whiskey don't do it. That's why we're always drunk. Uh, So it's, it's going to take a shotgun blast probably to knock us out. Are you just Irish? Really? You're 50%? Did you look that up? Like through one of those sites? Uh, uh, honestly, I don't know the exact percentage, but my grandmother was, I want to say 100, because her, her parents came from Ireland. 
like spoke Gaelic and everything. Wow. So she so she was a hundred like at least like a hundred percent Irish. So I, I have I'm guessing about fifty percent in me, maybe a little yeah. bit less, but I, I'm like majority Irish, I think. I'd be curious what your DNA is. I got mine done a couple years back and I have zero Irish in me. So <laughs> I, I know there's at least a little bit. Uh, there's some mystery stuff in us too. You know, we're not sure. Maybe there's some Polish in us. Oh, interesting. The we're, mystery we're meat. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there's mystery meat. You know, we're 50% Irish and 50% spam. <laughs> oh, so he places, like I said, the leprechaun in the crate, and then he sets a four leaf clover on top of the crate. Then we get a far shot, like a long shot to see like what the whole situation is. And there's no clover on top of the crate in the long shot. Then we cut to him pouring gasoline all over the crate. I don't see the clover in this shot. I was looking for it. Apparently the clover has the power to keep him, to to stop him from being able to do anything. So if he sets it on the crate, the leprechaun can't break out of the crate. So I was watching and annoyed that the clover appears and reappears and disappears all through these shots. That's a magic clover. <laughs> it is. So the leprechaun is inside. He grabs a match. He's getting ready to go down to the basement and the leprechaun has now woke up from his stunned gunshot and he's in the crate trapped and he's making all kinds of remarks and comments and voiceover to him. Don't strain yourself. At one point he even says, don't, don't have a stroke. <laughs> and I'm like, why do we need that voiceover of the leprechaun yelling, don't have a stroke? Because the dude is sweating and falls to his knees and he looks like he's having a heart attack, honestly. And he drops the match before he can light it. And he falls over what at this moment I assume is dead. I assume he had a heart attack and died. That's what I took from it too. I, I figured like the leprechaun talked him into dying. So here's the thing. I'm glad you said you thought that too. Because later we find out he indeed had a stroke and he lives. He's lived through the movie, which we'll discuss later. That is the only logical way I can think of why they made, they added the voiceover of the leprechaun going, now don't have a stroke because it doesn't look like that. It looks like he's having a heart attack and dies. That's a good point. Uh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's like I didn't want to put too much thought into the voiceover stuff. I thought it was just like they were throwing it in there because, well, we got to throw in like the leprechaun being the leprechaun, just making, you know, <laughs> stupid jokes and stuff like that. Yeah, they do that because later in the movie, and it took me after I watched this movie like three times and prep for the show. And like on the third watch, I was like, holy fuck. That is why they did that. Because it makes no sense later that uh, Nathan is like, oh, the man had a stroke. I'm like, what? So there you go. They kind of explain it with the leprechaun voiceover. Oh, okay. So now we get another shot of the clover up close. And then a wide shot shows the leprechaun shaking the crate and he's all pissed and there's no clover on it again. And it's there and it's not. It's there and it's not. He probably knocked it off. <laughs> Which, yeah. Then it's like, why the fuck couldn't you get out of the crate? Yeah, it was just so stupid to me. If you're going to make it a point to make this a thing, continuity, people. <laughs> stick with it well I, well I have i had an issue where it's like okay so the clover is like apparently the only weakness for the leprechaun well then what happens if you burn the damn house down and you're going to burn the clover up and then the leprechaun's probably going to come back right because the body's still technically there <laughs> thank you i'm willing i know you find this hard to believe i'm willing to roll with the rules that the movie is going to set forth for us I'll roll with it. That's fine. But when the movie starts, I just I just sneeze some bullshit there. I mean, um... <clears throat> oh, I thought you were sneezing. <laughs> no, no, that, that was literally me saying bullshit because with... I've I've seen you pull apart movies even when they give you the rules. But with this one, I was willing to to roll with it. But when they start screwing up their own fucking rules, then I get really annoyed. But anyway, for now, <laughs> music swells, fade to black. That's the end of that. Cut to a dad and we assume his teenage daughter driving in a car in what looks to be to me first watch uh, well this wasn't my first watch but this was you know first after many 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 years looks to be a hilly northern california because i'm from there so i was like oh they're in northern california maybe out in the in the boonies somewhere there's a country song and because i have captioning on the name of it <laughs> is four leaf clover playing while they're driving uh, yeah I, I i'm i'm sorry but i hate it when movies do that i really do <laughs> So this is where we get introduced to the insufferable teenage daughter, Tori, and her dad on their way to a house that he claims to have gotten for a steal. He got such a good deal on this house. Am I the only one, though, that because we keep bringing up teenage daughter, Jennifer Aniston, 
we've seen like 30 year old people play teenagers in the past like that that's like a regular occurring thing throughout the history of television movies a lot of times they look like teenagers i'm sorry jennifer aniston did not look like a fucking teenager to me yeah she was about 23 she like even at 23 she looked like she was like you know 27 (laughs) well and also this was what two years before three years before friends real close to friends it was yeah Okay, I was going to ask you how old do you think she is, so that that makes sense. That yeah, she she looked much older than than like seventeen. Yeah, I did not I did not believe her as a teenager. So again, as they're driving, we get uh, aerial shots of this jeep, and we hear voiceover of them talking, and she's complaining that she has to spend her summer. So again, leading leading to uh, she's a teenager because she's taking the summer to go stay with a parent. I have to spend my summer in New Mexico with my hick father. I was like, bitch, (laughs) are you kidding me right now? Okay. I mean, it's establishing who we are and where we are and all that. But then he corrects her and says, uh, North Dakota, not New Mexico. (laughs) She's complaining. Right. Right. And she's complaining. Well, I don't care where it is. It's not LA. I could be in LA right now. Shopping at the mall and all this bullshit. (laughs) I I do not condone child abuse, so I'm not going to condone this here when I say this. But I mean, I'm sure a lot of us probably would have looked the other way if there would have been five across the eyes happening at that moment. Well, we don't get to see them, though, until they arrive at the house. So they pull up in the Jeep to this house. It's the O'Grady house, and it looks very dusty and dirty and abandoned. And I thought, well, clearly this man died. And he had no relatives, nobody to inherit it. And so they probably sold it at auction or the bank sold it because it's fully furnished. All it's dusty. It hasn't been touched in a decade, supposedly. Again, leading me to think the man must have died. So (laughs) they're outside and she's looking at this place, completely whining and complaining. And the dad says, don't judge a book by its cover, honey. And when they go inside, it's fucking worse inside than outside. (laughs) It, it was even I was like kind of shuddering, like seeing it. I was like, oh, man, this just looks oh, it looked nasty. Right. I would have hired like a local team of just whoever off TaskRabbit to go in and like clean it out, dust, get all the cobwebs and paint or I don't know, something. Kill all the <laughs> bugs. I mean, because, you know, that place is crawling with all kinds of crap. Decades worth of old food rotting in the cupboards and shit. Oh, yeah. Rats, uh, possums, all kinds of stuff probably crawling up in there. So as she's going up the steps, though, to go inside the house, this is where we get one of an obvious shot of this. This bothered me so bad. More voiceover. But if you pay attention, her mouth doesn't move the entire scene. She does not open her mouth at all. She's not speaking. (laughs) But voiceover tells us she is. It's so frustrating. Kind of like they reminded me of the stuff. Oh. <laughs> she, her mouth was not moving at all. So, and of course me, Eagle Eye, on by third watch, I'm really paying attention. Yeah, her mouth doesn't move at all. So then we cut to the basement where we see a tarantula. No, thank you. No. Nope. Crawling across the crate. And we see a dehydrated, very dehydrated four-leaf clover. That was a thing that also bothered me was like, okay, It's got to be like a magic thing, but I'm thinking that clover. Okay. So this entire time we're going off of like, we're saying like maybe 10 years is what we're we're estimating for the timeline here. Mm -hmm. So in 10 years, the clover did not shrivel up to nothing. Nothing ever blew it off. Like it just magically stayed there the entire time. Yep. (laughs) This movie bothers me because I don't like being the logic person. (laughs) Well, you know, what was funny. I forgot to mention when he's sealing the leprechaun in the crate, he does grab a hammer and nails and start to hammer the lid shut to make sure the leprechaun can't get out. But he there's no clover on it when he's doing the hammering. I thought maybe it bounced off maybe and fell off the crate. I was wondering why he didn't put a nail through the clover to make sure it stayed on the crate. Maybe you can't puncture the clover. I don't know That's... what the magic logic is. <laughs> Yeah, they, they have to give us like rules. Like, I mean, because there's a lot of ways I can think of like, okay, why not just you've got it, you've got it in there instead of burning the damn thing down, go get more clovers, bury the whole box in clovers. <laughs> I would have done that. I would have like been breeding four leaf clovers, like raising them and had a blanket of them to just put over the crates. <laughs> exactly. To me, it feels like these movies do not use logic. God, I'm becoming you. So... She's complaining to her dad because it's filthy inside, right? rightly so. 
it's the only time I agreed with her. I was like, you're right. He did. He didn't do his due diligence and get this place livable. It's just not fair to do that. I don't think to somebody, but she's going, I'm going to go to a hotel and I'll pay for it myself. I'm like, so rich mom in LA maybe is what her life is. The way she acts, I kind of assume, but the, at the same time, the way she dresses, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. So his response to her saying she's going to get her own hotel room and fine, I'll just pay for it myself. I don't care. His answer is, do you really think money is all you need to get by in this life? Yes, I do, father. Yes, I I absolutely do. Would have been my response. (laughs) Pretty sure money's all I need to get by. Yeah. (laughs) I I mean, I I always agree with, uh, I think it was Gene Simmons that said, uh, money doesn't solve all your problems, but it it helps you arrive to them in style. (laughs) Yeah, pe- people say money doesn't buy happiness. Well, it buys coffee and puppies. So I'm pretty sure that's the same thing. <laughs> uh, I've never been now, unhappy with a puppy or coffee. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I money money can happiness. buy a lot of things. Money can buy, like I said, food, animals, comic books, um, all kinds of things. <laughs> Beyond the Shadows podcast. In the darkest corners of our universe lie spaces where even the light won't go. Places where terror and the unknown lurk, always waiting. Join Ryan and Scott on the Beyond the Shadows podcast as we pull back the curtain and peer into the darkness. We'll examine hauntings, true crimes, mysteries, UFOs, exorcisms, reincarnations, mysteries, and all things dark. Join us as we go Beyond the Shadows. Nothing over $3 right now on the website, trulyuniquejewelry.com. The website is now clearing out all of their inventory to make room for the new. Nothing over $3. Everything from necklaces, rosaries, rings, earrings, bracelets, extra extender chains, earring backs, every little thing you would need for your jewelry box, including gift boxes, all on clearance prices. So hop on over to trulyuniquejewelry.com. That's T-R-U-L-Y-Y-O-U n-i-q-u-e jewelry.com it's one flat rate for shipping so fill that box or envelope as full as you can with everything on the website priced under three dollars that's truly unique jewelry.com and now back to the show so she runs outside on her giant red flip phone the size of her face and she's gonna try trying to get through to a hotel Bumps into a dude that's out in her yard, causing him to spill a bucket of paint thinner. So she hangs up her phone and stops making her reservation. Okay. This is Nathan. He teases her for being afraid of spiders and bugs in a dusty house. And she says she's not afraid. She's staying. She, she's, she's not afraid. She'll do it. And I, it's just because she's a oh, cute boy. There's a cute boy. So I'm not leaving now. <laughs> It's so stupid. Uh, I think like in my notes, I, I think it was like, it was about this point that I wrote down. It was love at first sexist comment. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird to me in this movie that he is so clueless that she is enamored with him and likes him and tries to come on to him. He seems so absolutely clueless how to talk to a girl, a woman, deal with her if she's coming on to him like he's he has no idea whatsoever this character that, that's not unbelievable that was my life for about 30 freaking years <laughs> <laughs> well you know even though he's good looking it's a small town so he probably doesn't get out much and have a lot of experience i guess yeah, we'll like probably ha- probably half the town is related to each other so it's like which cousin are you gonna end up dating right <laughs> So the father comes out with her bag and says, you're right. I'm sorry. You can go stay at a hotel. And she's like, no, no, it's fine. I'm staying now that I've seen cute boy. What's funny to me, again, is that she's saying to her dad, I'm staying. Put the bag back. Like, try not to be obvious. And Nathan's watching all this. Like, dude, you're not picking up that she likes you from this? No. The dad looks over at Nathan after she goes back inside and he, the dad has a super confused look on his face as well. And I'm like, is the dad that clueless too? Maybe that's why he's divorced or separated (laughs) because he can't read women either. (laughs) I'm not, I'm just, okay. I'm not a parent. uh, So I don't know how this would work, but I would assume like most dads are probably not thinking that of their daughters because they 
don't want to think that. Oh, it's that's like, a good point. Yeah, it's like that's his little girl, so he doesn't want to think like, oh, she's staying because she wants to ride the new boy. <laughs> nope, that's a very good point, <laughs> actually. So then we cut to Ozzy. He is a simple fellow. This is Mark Holton from Teen Wolf, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, and tons of other stuff. I love this guy. I will admit, he got on my nerves a little bit in the beginning, but he starts to kind of grow on me a little bit later. So he is simple, I guess you could say, <laughs> in, in the brain area. And that's something that I don't think if you remade this today would fly. You would not have this character in here or the way that they speak to him in the in the, in a movie period. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You'd have to have the actual, like I have a person of that, uh, like with that kind of condition to play him. But yeah, you couldn't do the right. people of talking to him like that. Right, right. So he's chatting with a little boy, his friend Alex, and this is Nathan's younger brother. He looks maybe 10 or 11. As I've established, I'm terrible at that, but that's my guess. I couldn't tell either. He, he acted like he was in his 20s, though. <laughs> this little fucker takes his gum, wads it up, and shoots it at Ozzy's forehead with a slingshot at close range, like four feet. You could have taken his eye out, you little fucker. <laughs> I hated this kid. I, I absolutely hated this little shit. I, I mean, this this is a kid that I'm just like the entire time. I'm like, kill him, kill him, just kill him. But unbeknownst to us, this is Chekhov's slingshot because it's going to come back in the third act. But at this moment, I'm like, fuck you, you little asshole. I don't think so I ever stop saying fuck you, you <laughs> that little <laughs> asshole. So Ozzy's talking about aliens and magic and all this stuff. And Alex is telling him to stop telling stories. Nobody wants to hear your stories. I'm like, yeah, this kid's a dick. If you're friends with this guy and he's childlike mentality and you're friends with him and you're a child, I would think you guys would have stuff in common to talk about. Instead, they put little Alex into this position where he's kind of being older than his years and like taking care of Ozzy and talking down to Ozzy. And I'm like, what? All right, so the dad comes over, introduces himself to Alex and Ozzy, and we find out that they help Nathan with the painting. He's got a painting business. They're painting the outside of the house. Now, let's discuss this for a moment. <laughs> you and I just established that we are both disgusted with the interior condition of this place. But yet, priority one for Pops is let's paint the outside of the house without treating this old decrepit looking wood let's just slap a coat of bright blue paint on it and red on the shutters <laughs> what is going on i have no idea apparently like the logic for the writing was like okay there's no such thing as sexy handymen we can only have sexy painters so that's why we have to paint the outside of the house we can't have we can't have anyone working on the inside and doing the same exact part like for the story but no it's got to be on the outside <laughs> It's so bizarre. And also, in my opinion, two hideous bright colors like that, you don't put those together like that. And they're not treating the wood. Like, it just, yeah, it was so frustrating. Like, what are they even doing? I mean, okay, I don't hate the colors. I think the color scheme could work if you do it right. I mean, you got to throw some white in there. Like, if you do, like, a red, white, and blue, you get the right kind of red, right shade. Uh, so you want like America different... House. <laughs> well, what's not like America? It's like you just... You can kind of make it work if it's like the right shades. Like I said, like you yeah. don't go bright blue, bright red. You go like a kind of a lighter shade. Okay, mm -hmm. why am I talking like we're actually going to paint a fucking house? Let's just get back to the movie. <laughs> Next up, Tori is seen taking two glasses of colored liquid. It was lemonade. That's kind of what I got from it. Yeah, it's like white and pink-ish looking. I don't know. Um, like a, maybe like a raspberry like a, lemonade or something. Yeah, like a pink lemonade. That's what I'm thinking of. She's going down to the basement and we get a nice close up of her L.A. gear tennis shoes as if we didn't know she was a pretentious L.A. snob. <laughs> but I will say I had those shoes. <laughs> I had L.A. So, gears and Reeboks in multiple colors like that. So you're saying you were a pretentious L.A. snob? Not L.A., but I was a Southern California girl who had to stay up on the latest fashions, but I wasn't bitchy about it like she is. I didn't die <laughs> if I didn't have them. So she calls out to Nathan. The basement is not that big. He doesn't say anything. Very weird to me, but I'm like, whatever. Then we see a lep the leprechaun in his crate, covered in cobwebs, snoozing away. <laughs> that was creepy. <laughs> it very much was. 
She gets startled when a tarp falls on her. Nathan pops out of nowhere and the tray falls on the crate of her drinks and spills. And she says, gee, I sure hope the drinks didn't spill inside and ruin what's inside the crate. Because there's, you know, slats and holes. We cut to the leprechaun. No liquid has fallen inside the crate. (laughs) Oh, magic. Magic barrier. (laughs) So then the leprechaun wakes up and the cracks in the board. I do like this. The cracks in the slats of the wood on the crate allow for light to shine in onto him. And with the cobwebs and stuff, he does look sufficiently creepy. I really liked that. He was the only thing about this movie, like the look of him was the only thing about this movie that was actually scary. So Nathan teases Tori to get her to open the crate. He's double dog daring her, basically. But then they run outside before they can because they hear Ozzy screaming. Cut to Ozzy covered in a different shade of blue paint than what they're actually painting the house with. And it's all over his face, his hair, his shirt. He's covered in this paint. Inside, he's been sent in to go to the bathroom to clean up. We see him coming out of somewhere with a towel on his head, toweling off. And he's completely, perfectly clean. (laughs) As a person who works with paint, that's exactly how paint works. You get covered in paint, and then you just go in the bathroom for about like two, three minutes and come out completely clean. Yes. I was like, oh, (laughs) whatever. So he goes down to the basement because he hears a child's voice down there singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. So creepy. I I don't find it creepy when they have little kids doing creepy things in horror movies. I just, to me, it's just like, I always feel like if it's actually the kid, you're just going to walk up and backhand the kid. Stop being creepy. (laughs) So you don't watch ghost movies with little kids like the grudge and shit like that? They're not creepy to me because I'm just like, I'm not scared of kids. I'm like, you know, I can beat a kid up. A ghost kid? <laughs> I would pay money for that. I want to see that. I, I I would fight a ghost kid. I would be like, no, just go to your room, you little <laughs> shit. I'll fight you. <laughs> it's like when they have like the, the sexy ghost in the horror movie. I'm like, okay, I'm probably going to die, but I'm going to die having a damn good time. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> So he goes down to the basement. The voice asks Ozzy to let it out of the crate. So he brushes that dusty old clover off of the crate and the leprechaun comes bursting out. The leprechaun eats a bug that's crawling on him and says he was starving because he hasn't eaten in 10 years. There's our timeline. So the leprechaun tells Ozzy he is a leprechaun, but he used to be a shoemaker by trade. And he mentions Ozzy's shoes need a shine. And he grabs a little rag and is going to shine his shoes <laughs> like an elf uh, cobbler, like ter- mixed in with leprechaun. Like what? Yeah, this was weird as shit to me. This was like the weirdest thing you could possibly throw into the movie. Like, OK, why, why are you giving this little guy a foot fetish? What the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it becomes a running gag in the film. And I'm like, what? What? So it reminded me similar of when there's uh, a couple times I've seen jokes about when there's a vampire and you throw a handful of rice on the floor and they have to stop and count all the grains of rice obsessively. I've never seen that joke. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. That's what it made me think of. I'm like, I guess we had to give him a weird obsessive thing to keep him occupied at key points in the motion picture. I don't know. (laughs) Because remember, in the 90s, OCD was funny. So the leprechaun asks Ozzy, where is my gold? Ozzy says he doesn't know. And he gets away because the leprechaun's powers are weak because he's been locked up and doesn't have his gold, which apparently is the source of his strength, according to the rules this movie is laying out. (laughs) The the rules that it constantly breaks. I I, I have a problem with that because not the rule thing, but just I feel like the leprechaun, like I always kept wondering the entire movie, was this the reason you don't see him in the beginning with any other leprechauns is because was he a dick? (laughs) He has no leprechaun friends because he's an asshole. I I really wondered about that because like he doesn't even stop to ask, like, okay, the guy that stole the gold is dead. These people have nothing to do with this. He should know this, but he never wants is just like, oh, hey, can you help me out? He's just like, no, I'm going to kill you. So Ozzy runs outside yelling leprechaun. And of course, nobody believes him because he likes to tell fantastical stories. Nathan says, let's all go down to the basement and check. He grabs a big stick. And it did make me laugh when you hear Ozzy say, oh, that, that's not, that stick's not big enough. You're going to need a bigger stick. <laughs> that was funny. 
So of course they get down there and they don't see him, but then they hear a noise, which turns out to just be a rat. Then outside, Ozzy sees a rainbow appear out of nowhere. It has not been raining. It's just a beautiful sunny day. And all of a sudden, this really vibrant rainbow. And Ozzy and Alex run off to see what's at the end of the rainbow. I don't like that everyone keeps poo-pooing on poor Ozzy and his ideas and his fantastical stuff. Because don't uh, people who don't believe in fantastical things like Nathan and Tori... Don't they think it's a little odd that a rainbow just uh, magically showed up out of nowhere and disappears just as quickly? Isn't that strange? Probably is. But I mean, like you said earlier, when I was complaining about the woman opening the suitcase, they don't know they're in a horror movie. So they're probably just like, okay, just a rainbow. It showed up. (laughs) Just a run of the mill rainbow, even though it didn't rain at all. Yeah, that's true. So sure enough, at the rainbow's end is an old truck with a pot of gold inside. That's where old uh, uh, Mr. O'Grady has hidden the gold. It's not a pot. It's actually a sack, a sack of gold. And Ozzy is like, oh, this is definitely real gold because I've seen this in a movie. And he goes to bite it and chew on the coin to see if it's real. And he accidentally (laughs) swallows it. I was like, you're lucky that didn't block your esophagus. That coin is pretty big. Yeah. And it was, it was funny because like the moment that happened, you're just like, oh, okay, this is obviously going to turn into something. <laughs> yes, this will be a thing. <laughs> so Alex takes one of the coins and says, let's go get this appraised. And they decide to hide the sack of gold inside the well behind the house now. Ozzy gets real excited because he says, now that they're rich, I can buy a new comic every week. <laughs> And I was just like, oh, bless your heart. Alex, however, the little yep. shithead fucker, yep. says, waiting. yeah, they can afford now to get Ozzy an operation to fix his brain and make him smart. Th- th- what? This is literally what I wrote down mm. after he said that. I was like, wow, Alex is a real dick. Even if he's trying to be nice in a way, because I understand where he's coming from. But that was just a complete dick way of saying it. <laughs> And put a pin in it. Let's note, Alex says it first to Ozzy. Then Ozzy says, but I am smart. And I was like, (laughs) oh, yes, you are. Bless your heart. But Alex immediately shuts it down by saying, well, if you were, then people wouldn't make fun of you. And he's like, people make fun of me? Why the fuck would you say that? (laughs) All right. So back at the house. More heavy, very obvious flirting to everybody but Nathan is underway as he shows Tori how to paint. (laughs) Long strokes up and down. (laughs) All we needed was in the background that little bounce. So then they need more paint. So she's okay, I'll go grab some. And he he takes off for a rag or something. He says, oh, I need some more rags. And he leaves. She turns around and goes over to the truck to get some more paint. We see under the truck, the leprechaun comes crawling up. He strokes her leg on the front of her calves because she's facing the truck, right? She stands there and goes, Nathan, what are you doing? Or whatever she says. And she kind (laughs) of looks over her shoulder and then she sees Nathan behind her back at the house. You thought Nathan snuck up behind you, crouched down, reached around to the front of your legs to stroke your legs. What? (laughs) That's that's a lot of effort to be creepy. That's that's like too much effort to be creepy. (laughs) Who's flabbergasted what she's completely a moron so she screams when she realizes it's not nathan and she gets scratched and then they check and the leprechaun's gone dad comes running around because he claims he heard her screaming even though he was already coming around that corner (laughs) right before she screamed she says something scratched me and then they hear meow meow from like a little far away they're like oh it was just a cat but before that, because I remember they question her because she's like, she's like, something scratched me. And he's like, well, how do you know it's not an animal and or, or something like that? And I forget what the exact word she was. She said, I thought it was Nathan rubbing my leg. Yes, that's right. And she kind of brings up like, oh, you don't think I, I don't know what it's like when a man touches my leg. Yeah. So she goes, <laughs> she goes, I thought it was Nathan rubbing my leg. And he goes, and you let me? <laughs> and then the, 
she goes well yeah i mean it's not like i don't know what it feels like to have a man rub my leg and the dad goes you do <laughs> i love that I, I i that was great because like when i saw that like you saw on his face i wrote that down in my notes it's like that's the exact moment that the dad learns that his daughter's a slut <laughs> <laughs> yeah the look on that dad's face that's the him realizing his daughter's a whore bitchy <laughs> And a whore. He's like, oh, that's how you got those new shoes. Okay. <laughs> Sugar daddy bottom four. Nathan, come on. What are you doing? Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Are you okay? I heard you scream. Oh. I thought that was you rubbing my leg. Can you let me? That's at the point. Something was, was rubbing my leg, like caressing it. And it, it ran off over there. It's probably just an old possum, honey. No, no, Dad, that was not an animal. Okay, I know what it feels like when a man caresses my leg. You do? So they go over to this tree because they think they hear the cat inside. The dad just reaches his hand in. He's like, oh, let's go grab that little precious ball of fur and get it out of that tree. But he That's... pulls his hand out screaming because there's a big chunk been taken out of his hand. Somebody bit his hand. That I mean, I love cats. I absolutely love cats. Even I know you do not go looking. I mean, you don't do that with a cat because you don't know if it's wild, feral, if it's got diseases. You don't know, like, if it's scared. You don't want to intimidate it. It's the stupidest thing in the world to do. And look what happened. He got end up getting cat scratch fever because of it. That's the same. You got to do that with me, too. You can't approach me abruptly with your hand because you don't know if I'm feral. You don't know if I have diseases. <laughs> I mean, I'm similar to a cat in that way. <laughs> so the thing that was weird, though, was <laughs> the long shot we get. I don't know why they bother with this, honestly, in the movie at all. We know it was the leprechaun, obviously. But this it's this little tree. The tree is very slim and tiny. We get a shot through the through the uh, hole in the tree, the tree trunk, of the leprechaun laughing and licking his lips that he is the one that bit the guy. It's such a terrible shot because it's clearly a superimposed little round image of his face on this black hole on the tree. Like, it's a terrible shot. I don't know why they bothered. Yeah, they didn't need to do that because like the audience isn't dumb. We know it's you're not going to like swap out, out villains in the middle of this movie. It's like, oh, now we've got an angry kitty. Jennifer Aniston's nickname. <laughs> so everyone jumps into the truck. They're going to rush dad to the hospital and the truck won't start. So little Alex says, oh, it's the distributor cap. And he hops out, opens the hood, and it's a whole bunch of yellow wires running to the I guess distributor, ca I don't know, cars. He jiggles it and it starts. The truck starts right up. Yeah, like, like th this was the one part of the movie that I was like, yeah, that could be believable. I don't like jack shit about cars, so that could work. They're not getting that one over on, oh, yes, they are, because I don't know yeah. cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leprechauns, God damn it. That, that you're not going to get by me. But the car <laughs> thing, yeah, I, I have nothing. <laughs> so we see the leprechaun run into their barn and grab a little kitty-sized tricycle, complete with a bell, Ching, 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 ching. They keep doing the bell. And makes chase and they speed the film up. So he's going like double time, like Three Stooges comic double time. I was I was waiting for the Benny Hill music to just start playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have music that accompanies it, but it's not as amusing as the Benny Hill theme. So now night has fallen in their drive to town. So who knows how far town is as they pull up to the hospital. Nathan tells Ozzy and Alex, why don't you guys go to the cafe and grab a bite to eat? Because we're going to be a while. We'll, we'll meet you there later. But instead, they run off and take that gold coin that Alex has to Joe's Collectibles and Coins. Could we have a more generic name? <laughs> it's probably on Main Street, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, like Main Street is basically the street. This town looks like it hardly has 12 people living in it. How the hell does it have that big ass hospital? <laughs> I know, I thought that too. So Joe is closing, but he goes ahead and lets them in. We see a shadow of the leprechaun pulling up outside against a dumpster with the backlit. You hear the damn tricycle bell, the ching, 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 ching of the bell. <laughs> it's so stupid. Inside, Joe says he's never seen a coin like it. And if it's solid gold, it could be worth $500. And then he says, but we had have to add historical value to that maybe as well. So pretty valuable. Uh, do you mind if I keep it overnight and analyze it? And Alex is like, sure, no problem. And then he and Ozzy leave as he says, 
boy, they're going to be pissed we were gone so long. How big is this street? <laughs> you weren't <laughs> gone that long. No, that, that, that kind of caught me off too, because I was like, wait a second, you guys weren't really gone. It, it seemed like you, you were gone for like maybe five minutes. <laughs> exactly. Joe gets this old looking uh, rare coin book and he's starting to flip through it, but he gets interrupted by the tricycle bell sound. And then he gets startled when the bike rolls right into him out of nowhere as he's bent down at the safe. The leprechaun pops out of the safe, which to me was confusing because I understand magic. However, this movie has laid out the rules previously that he has weak powers to no powers when he doesn't have his gold. That's true. But I was going to say, we didn't see the safe the whole time. He could have been a safe cracker. That's true, right? They need to get him to work in Ocean's Eleven. So also, not in this movie, obviously, but something just to throw out there for later, as we move further along in the franchise, fast and loose with the rules, because later he can't beat... It's not a crate with a clover on it. It's like an iron. He can't break out of iron. So if they throw him into a, like an iron safe and shut the door, he's trapped inside the iron safe and he can't get out. So then I was like going back and watching this after watching the other Leprechaun movies. I was like, what? He can't be in here. He'd be trapped. But that's not a rule that they lay out in this movie. It's in a future movie. But anyway, I was still confused by the magic part of it. A lot of it's confusing. But then that, that the problem is you just got to realize that there's no such thing as continuity in the Leprechaun universe. There's really not. So he asks for his gold coin, and when the man doesn't give it to him, he starts to chew on his leg. <laughs> he likes to chew on body parts, apparently. I couldn't tell. Was he like a man-eater or a dog just like chewing on things? Like, what the hell was the thing doing? But at least it was gory, so I'll give it that. Oh, we get a little more gore when we are treated next to something I honestly never thought I would see in a film, and I don't think I've ever seen since. A slow-motion death by pogo stick the, the leprechaun grabs a pogo stick from the corner hops across the room in slow-mo and starts stomping on this man's chest singing about it happily until he kills the man <laughs> the thing that's confusing to me out of this whole scene is the fact that somebody sat down and thought this was a great idea and wrote it out <laughs> mark jones we're looking at you buddy <laughs> yep don't want to say, I didn't want to say names, didn't want to call them out like that, but you you went ahead and did it. So yeah, Mark Jones, the fuck were you smoking, dude? That was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in a horror movie. Then he dismounts and notices the man's shoes, remarks how dirty they are, grabs a cloth. Oh, they're, they're so filthy and starts to wipe them. And he says and out loud, I believe that he's shining them because they're so filthy. And then he finishes shining them and he goes there, nice and shiny. No, they're not. They're fabric shoes with clear stains on them. Dirt, blood, I don't know what. You did not get his shoes shiny, Sir Leprechaun. You did not. Makes no sense. Exactly. So the Leprechaun then sees a giant toy car and gets very excited. <laughs> we then cut to the Saugus Cafe and Lounge. And that's when I went, oh, got it. They filmed this in California. Because Saugus is in Santa Clarita area in California. Because I'm like, that that's real specific. What a specific name of a place to make that up. They didn't make it up. It's a real place <laughs> okay. in Northern California. I'm hoping the food they served was not the real food from the cafe. It looked disgusting. The diner food. To me, I've seen TV dinners come out looking better than that. That's kind of what it reminded me of. Like a really old style Swanson meatloaf tv dinner with the side of carrots and peas and shit yeah it didn't even look as delicious as that <laughs> so you're saying those look delicious those compared TV dinners. to this yes compared to this yes it looked like wet dog food this meatloaf <laughs> so the nathan and tori are in the booth oh he hasn't gotten his food yet at this point we learn that tori's dad is staying in the hospital overnight for observation and all i could think from a bite on his hand all i could think was Ah, movies and TV. <laughs> That's the only place where people stay in hospitals overnight for observation with a animal bite on their hand. <laughs> yeah, I can go into the emergency room with a bullet wound in my ass and they'll be like, yeah, we'll just pull the bullet out, put a Band-Aid on and just send you on your way. Like, they're, they're not going to keep me overnight. Right? <laughs> I was like, what is there to observe? 
I guess we had to just conveniently have a way to have the dad out of the picture because having Nathan, who is clearly an adult, uh, Tori, who is older, we can't have another adult in the film, I guess, making adult decisions. <laughs> like, are the are we supposed to assume that Nathan can't make good choices? And like, none of that made any sense to me. Like, getting rid of the dad was... Okay. The only thing I could figure is because we have too many characters. Uh... So we got to get rid of one. But at the same time, it's like, well, maybe kill some of the annoying ones. <laughs> right? Knock them off. Yeah. Yeah. We, we so don't need Tor Alex. Let's just kill him. <laughs> that little fucker. So Tori's complaining and Nathan's trying to say nice things and comfort her. Then we cut to a police deputy enjoying his roadside donut and coffee break. When Leprechaun in his toy car goes whizzing by, I'm guessing again, Leprechaun magic. I don't know how he has it without his gold, but he's <laughs> driving this little fucking car down the road. Zippity zip. Well, technically he does have one coin now. Well, yeah, true. So the cop pulls him over. <laughs> My question was, if this was a real scenario, the Leprechaun, why stop? Why would the leprechaun stop? Just keep going. <laughs> if this was a real scenario, the cop would not have gone after the leprechaun. That's true. He'd be too two donuts deep and like fuck it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, no, I'm not. I'm. I was like, I'm not dealing with this shit tonight. So the cop walks over, and the leprechaun ends up grabbing his face after a little verbal back and forth. He's screaming. The leprechaun grabs his gun off his belt and tosses it away. And then we cut. It's very quick, abrupt, bizarre editing here. Then we go back to the cafe where Nathan is putting a hurtin' on that dinner. Like we said, meatloaf smothered in this gross looking dark gravy, the little veggies, the, the peas and carrots on the side. And it looked like rice. It didn't even look like potatoes to me. I was like, what the fuck is he eating? This is disgusting. Yeah, it didn't look. Uh, oh, and Tori is even acting disgusted at this, which I was fine with because I thought it was disgusting, too. But. She just has to be bitchy. He's he's all here. Have something to eat. And she goes, I don't want that. And he's like, well, you need to eat. She goes, I did want to eat, but they don't have what I want. She wanted a watercress salad and an Avion water. Bitch, please. You know how many times I've been to diners and cafes? So it's not watercress, but I guarantee you they have fucking salad. <laughs> you could oh, yeah. have eaten a salad. Oh, yeah. No, that's exactly what I put down, too, is like her attitude comes off like she doesn't eat meat, but it's not because it's right. It's because now she's just a stuck up bitch. Yes, because then she follows that line with all they have here is cheap whiskey and warm beer. He's fucking eating food right in front of you, you cunt. <laughs> they clearly have more than whiskey and beer. I wanted to slap her so hard right then. Yeah. And on top of the fact, there is no diner like that that is serving whiskey. I don't even know if they're going to serve beer. Yeah, it was super annoying. Like, why do you got to say that? And and Nathan, trying to be nice still to this bitch, slides his cup of water over to her, even though she's got one in front of her. And she hands it right back and says, gee, thanks. I'm like, <laughs> I just wanted to strangle her. He was She was annoying as hell. I look back on it. I'm like, what the hell? Like, why did I have a thing for her? And then I'm like, oh, that's right. Tits and ass. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> I was going to make a mean joke about her nose, but I won't. <laughs> All right, listeners, that is going to wrap up part one of our discussion on Leprechaun. Please come back next week for part two when we wrap this amazing episode up. In the meantime, if you'd like to check out Leprechauns 1, 2, 3, or 4 in space, which I highly recommend you do. At the time of this episode recording, they were available if you have Amazon Prime free in the streaming. And then the rest of the franchise is available in Amazon, but they are at the buy or rent. They're, they're not free with Prime. You have to pay for them. You got to check out one and four. That's my suggestion. Uh, the rest you can skip. In any event, thank you so much for listening. And uh, don't forget to hop on over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash let's talk turkeys for other fun content that you're not getting here on the main feed. And I'll see you all next week. Goodbye. Hey listeners, Movie Miss here saying we know you have a lot of options when it comes to podcasts. So we want to thank you so much for listening to ours. Please make sure to find us on our socials and join us. Be part of our bad movie conversations. We want to chat with you.
We're on Facebook with an official page, as well as a Let's Talk Turkeys discussion group, where you can talk with other like-minded individuals who like bad movies. We're on Instagram at Let's Talk Turkeys. Our Twitter handle is at Gobble Podcast. That's G-O-B-B-L-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. And of course, you can always email us direct. We would love to get suggestions from you of movies you would like us to cover. If you want to be a guest on the show, we would love that. So directly, that's Let's Talk Turkeys, all one word, at yahoo.com. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.